Alright, how's it going y'all? Today we're back in Synology, going over how to set up Synology photos on mobile devices. Specifically, really gonna be going over how to use the mobile backup feature and how I've done it and really got my entire family together to really use the exact same setup, which has been really great. It allows everybody to just back up their photos to a centralized place, and so that way you don't have to pay for extra cloud storage and you don't have to worry about, oh, I accidentally deleted something because I thought, oh, I need to get rid of space. Instead, it's just always on the NAS in case you ever need it. And so that's a really great feature and it just kind of gets everybody into this ecosystem. Though there are a few quirks to it that I found, so I kind of wanted to go over those. All right, so full disclosure, this is gonna be done on an iPhone, which is what I use. However, this should still work on any Android phones, which is one really nice thing, is it just allows you to have everybody in the same ecosystem without having to pay Google and have Google use their your photos as well, training data for its AI and anything else Google wants to do with them. And so it should work with Android just fine, but I've personally not been able to test it before. All right, and so this is gonna be a bit of a continuation from my last tutorial on how to set up a family shared folder on Synology Photos. And so this is gonna be for that setup where you've got your family, you want everybody to have access to the shared folder, and you want everybody to have access to back up their mobile files and everything like that. And funny enough, in that tutorial, I mentioned that I wish that Synology would allow you to say, okay, this person has access to this folder in shared space, but not this folder. And lo and behold, the next update came out for Synology Photos, and that was a feature, and it's great. It really allows you to use this for exactly the way you want to set up Synology Photos, which I'm very happy about. And then the last caveat is you do need to be updated to DSM-7 and have DSM-7 Photos installed on your machine. But once you've gone ahead and done all that, we can go ahead and get started. The first thing you need to go ahead and do is just log into DSM and just make sure that people have access to Synology Photos. So just go into Users and Group, and if you're doing what I recommended and go Family, go ahead and just say Applications, have access to Synology Photos. That way everybody has access to Synology Photos and can use this. Then, that's really all you have to do within DSM. So now, we're just gonna go ahead and pull out our phones and we're gonna go ahead and log in on the Synology Pho Photos mobile app. It is very, very easy to go ahead and do. And by default, you will see that you just go ahead and start with the actual app. Now we'll just go ahead and go into more down here and we'll just go ahead and click mobile backup. And we're gonna go ahead and enable mobile backup and we're going to go ahead and say backup all photos because we want to start from the beginning of every single photo we've ever had on our destination. And now we just have a couple of quick options. You've got Wi-Fi only, so you will only back up when you are on Wi-Fi, that way you don't have to worry about data. And then photos only. So if you don't want to upload video because it's too large, you can choose that as well. And then duplicate files, you've got a couple of options here. I would generally just recommend skipping them because if they're duplicate, they're probably the same file. But if you might have duplicate names somehow, you can go ahead and hit rename. And so that way, you make sure every single photo gets backed up. But if you've done this twice, you could end up with duplicate photos of everything. So I would recommend skip. And now just hit enable. You'll be asked for permission to back everything up, and then it's just gonna go ahead and back up, and so that's why my phone got all blurry, because I don't want you to see the photos from me when I was like 12 years old and first got my first phone. And so that's all there is to it. Now it's just gonna go ahead and back up. But the thing is, the first backup can take an insanely long amount of time because of the way that iPhones work. The way iPhones work is they will automatically shut down an app if it's been running too long without the user opening it. And so, within I think 30 seconds from when you close an app, the app says, hey, hey, you gotta go into standby mode. And standby mode pretty much only allows them to do very small amounts of things, just so that you don't have an app that's just always updating something that you've not opened in a while and just burning through battery life. And Apple is very strict on this, there's really no exceptions. And so because of that, the first time backup could take months if you never open the app. And so what I recommend people do for the very first time they're setting this up is basically just turn on your phone so that it never goes to sleep, put the brightness to as low as you can get, plug it in overnight, and just leave the Photos app open and let it go through and then back everything up like that. That's the only way I know of how to do it, and that's what I did. And then once you've done that, if you don't open it for months, 
and you're just taking a few photos a day, I'm hundreds of photos a day probably, it's still going to keep up with your backup. But it's just not gonna be able to get ahead if you don't ever let it go off in the beginning. All right, and so now, you've just got an easy way of your entire photo library being backed up to Synology Photos. Now you'll be able to see the photo library from, that's on your phone from any web browser if you set up Quick Connect. It'll also allow you to very easily share photos that are in your photo library to other albums. So what I've had people do is spouses will just go through and say, okay, have a shared album with everything in my photo library automatically shared with my spouse. And that way you can just go through and if a photo's on your wife's phone, just go through and grab it. And you can just open it up there and that way both people have access to all the photos while they're still being organized. And so that's a great solution and you can really customize this to exactly however you'd like to set it up. All right, well that's gonna be it for this tutorial. Go and leave any other tutorials like see me make in the comments below and have a good one, bye.